So hi everyone, my name is Nyla Reyes. I'm the Assistant Director of Admission at Scripps College, and I'm really looking forward to sharing uh, my knowledge about college application and essay tips. So we'll go ahead and start the presentation. Right. So like I said, you're all here for the tips for application admission for uh, just general college application process. Um, so the point of today's, or what we're gonna be thinking about in today's agenda is really the purpose of college essays college specific essays, what we as admission officers are looking for, and just overall tips for your essays and applications. So when we think about the purpose of your essays, you know, yes, it's a really good ability or opportunity for us to be able to see who you are as a person, but also it does give us a good sense of academic fit as well. Um, how are your writing abilities? What are you passionate about outside of the classroom? Or what are you passionate about inside the classroom? And really seeing those different parts of your personality and your character will also be able to see if you can gauge the writing at that campus. It also provides brighter, broader context. You know, a lot of what you've already submitted in your application will be things that have already been out of your control, your grades, your um, letters of recommendation, your co-curricular activities, all of those things you would have already written about, but this is a one time you get to art to advocate your, advocate for yourself. So really it does provide that broader context for us, for us as readers when we're looking at your applications. And also like what I said too about your intellectual interests, you know, whether you're passionate about dance and STEM or STEM or the arts, the humanities, political science, this is really where we really do able to get a good sense of who you are, um, like I said, in and out of the classroom. So kind of going just a little bit deeper into what I was talking about, the purpose of the essay. So again, this is a section that you have complete control over. Everything else again at that point would have already been out of your control. So, you know, highlight about who you are as a person. This is really where you get to showcase who you are. Remember, a stranger is reading your application. So the essays really do help us understand, um, you know, what type of student will you be on, on other campuses? What kind of student will you be in the classroom? And us being able to envision you on our campuses when you're thinking about and applying to specific colleges. It's also a place to show unique, unique achievements. You know, um, maybe you started a club on your campus. Maybe you have family responsibilities, or maybe you got the Girl Scout Gold Award. Like these are things our students can write about, and these are things that we are able to see through your essays. They're an important part of your application to your colleges. So it is something that we really do look for in your purpose of in your essays. Again, too, it's a place to showcase your intellectual curiosity and interests. Again, if you're interested in STEM and like dance, arts, music, um, it is accessible for our students um, kind of to definitely be able to kind of show that different parts of themselves, like your academic and just like their overall interests in general. It's an opportunity for you as to show us as a reader how certain circumstances or obstacles have shaped you. So yes, there will be a COVID section um, for, you know, for our students. It's completely optional for you to write anything that and how you've been infected through COVID. But if not too, maybe there was a struggling semester, your sophomore year, something personal happened. Like there's additional essays for our students to write those um, write about those those things that happen, those obstacles that they face, because that does provide context. Because if I'm in committee and I see a lower GPA the sophomore year of high school, um, it, it might be a little concerning. But if I have that context information, I can then share that information with the committee, and we're able to have a good sense as to like what the broader context is. And just keep in mind, you know, we as readers really just want to feel like we actually met you, especially in a virtual world where we're not really able to connect with students in the past. We really do just want to be able to, um, again, imagine you on our campus, but also seeing like even without not even seeing you or meeting you, or maybe we have you know, interviews or uh, other visit opportunities for other colleges as well. Um, it really just helps us get a sense of who you are and like what you'll be on our campuses. So I also want to talk about college specific essays, you know, with so many students applying to so many colleges, it's very, it's very easy to fall into this idea of like, I'm going to write about um, the same response for every college. We understand you're applying to many schools, even applying to more than two, three schools is still a lot, especially navigating the year where you're having to do everything virtually, especially, but 
it really, the college specific essays really are important because we know that you want to go to college. We know that you want to pursue X major, but we want to know why you want to come to that specific campus. So we always advise, you know, resist, resist the urge to copy and paste the same response to each campus. Um, also too, um, show us how our campus can be your home away from home. Again, we need to be able to envision you on our campus. Um, have substantive reasons to attend, not just the beauty of their campus. I know a common thing for Scripps specifically is that it is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at the background that I'm in right now. Like this is part of one of our residence halls. It is a beautiful campus, but yes, it's important, but we know it's a beautiful campus. Yes, it's good to paint the scene, but we're able to, we really need to be able to envision you like in what you want to do on our campuses or what you love about the campuses. Um, and we also, a lot of the things too, I always like to mention is don't just pull information from the website. You know, a lot of the times we're the people who wrote the content that's on the website. So we know exactly what, like the core, like all these other things um, that might be specific numbers. Um, so really, it just needs to be really catered to that campus. And then for the additional supplemental essays, what I'll say is that they are weighed just as equally as a personal statement. You know, your personal statement will probably be the most polished essay that you are ever going to write. And that is great. But I will spend just as much time reading the personal statement as I'll be reading the short, the supplemental essays that we do ask for in the Common App. For scripts, we do have two um, and they're short responses. Um, so just make sure that you're fully answering the question and use these essays to highlight another side of you that you haven't already covered. So I always like to use the example of tennis. Not sure why, I've never played, but um, if you write your personal statement how you love tennis, you fell in love with the sport, you're the captain, I'm like, great, I really learned about your passion for tennis. And then in Y Scripts, you write, I want to play tennis at Scripps. Cool, okay, I can see you envisioning on campus, but I'm still seeing that you like to be playing tennis. And then your next essay and your supplemental essays, like one of our questions is, if you could trade lives with someone, who would it be and why? If you write, I would trade lives with a tennis player. All I've learned in those essays is you love tennis. And that's great. I'm glad to see your passions. But if I see it consistently out of those three essays, it really is a missed opportunity because you could have highlighted so much more about yourself. Um, maybe you would trade lives with the tennis, the trainer of the tennis player because you're interested in you know the biology and the movement and muscle. Um, you know, sports therapy, all of those things. I'm like, great, now I know you have something beyond that like extends beyond tennis, but now you're connecting it to something else. It's not about being unique in your college essays. It's about kind of really painting the picture of who you are and being genuine. Um, because again, it's really us just trying to be able to envision you on our campuses, but also seeing if you're a good fit. So this is actually a really good example of like attending X college. Um, so the weaker strategy is um, attending X college will prepare me to get into medical school of my choice, become a doctor and support my financials, parents financially. That's great. I, I know your goals, like I'm learning something about you. Um, you wanna go to medical school, but a stronger approach would be more of the following essay, which is, well, my lab partner watched, I slit open the frog's belly and examined its tiny intricate organs. Instead of being grossed out, I was fascinated and my passion for science, particularly biology was ignited. The fascination led me to seek out advanced summer biology courses at my local community college as the youngest person in the classroom. They both tell me a story. They both give me something, but the stronger approach is stronger because it, it's more, it's not just about like painting this image. It's more of, it's me seeing that genuine interest in biology seeing that, you know, like as my peers were disgusted, I really enjoyed it. It made me, it led me to other opportunities. You see the growth of the application. Um, whereas with X college, it's something that really is just more general uh, or not to say even more general, but it's more of, it doesn't really paint as much of a picture. Um, it's more of like why I want to be successful whereas rather I want to pursue X major or I wanna do this, it's detail, you know, it's hard, but it's the really the balance in the applications is to be concise, but also provide context as well. So what we as admission officers are really looking for when we're reading applications um, is academic ability. We can see that in so many ways. So um, essays, um, letters of recommendation, your grades, 
Um, not so much anymore with scores, just because we are test optional. And I know that we have a question about that. So I'll kind of talk about that in the next few slides. Um, interest, you know, in and out of the classroom, what are you doing? What are you passionate about? Your story, you know, you as a person have a different story than any other candidate. So really, we just want to get to know a little bit about who you are as a person. And just the outside perspective, you know, that's where we see the letters of recommendation. We get to see what type of person you are, not just in the classroom, but outside of the classroom. Or maybe you have a uh, an employer write a letter of recommendation for you. That also paints the picture of what kind of employee you are, just an overall person. So really, again, your application should cover different aspects of who you are, but kind of tying together in how you advocate for yourself as well as in your essays. So kind of what I was kind of talking about earlier and kind of just an extension of that is that what we look for is, you know, the evidence of academic success, achievement, intellectual curiosity. You know, yes, it's good to get grades, but also do you love to learn? Like, you know, the purpose too of a liberal arts college is to help students strengthen, strengthen their critical thinking skills and your analytical thinking skills. So we really just want to know, like, do you actively love to learn? Are you learning for the sake of learning? Or are you doing it just for the grade? You know, it's important to really get a sense of what you're passionate about, um, like in the classroom or outside of the classroom. So then that way we're able to see again, like how you can be on campus. We wanna know how you're gonna make meaningful contributions on your campus life. I also would like to stress that we acknowledge that in the middle of a pandemic, it's not exactly accessible to do activities you might have done before or continue it the way you would have done. So really, we just want to know of what you're going to be doing on our campus in the future also. Like, what are you most passionate about? What are activities you would like to do? Um, so we really also just want to see though, well, like what kind of person will you be on our campus? Are you a leader in a classroom? You know, you're the first to speak up or maybe you're the first like, you know what? I might not be the first to speak up, but uh, when I do speak up, it speaks volumes because I'm more on the shyer side, but I do think thoughtfully about my responses. All of those are great ways to contribute to a campus. So we really just want to get a good sense of that when we're reading your application of how you're going to make a difference on our campus. Um, you know, diversity of experience and background is important too. You know, the great thing about a lot of colleges is that they don't all have one specific type of student. They all can be very different in their experiences and that's what makes it an enriching experience. So to hear different perspectives and experiences really does add to a college experience. So we do wanna see that when we're looking at applications. Uh, we also want to know that you want to come to our school. We know you want to go to college, but again, we really want to know and be affirmed that like, yes, X college is the place for me. I absolutely love it. That is my jam. That is what I want to do. I envision myself there. And these are the reasons why, because of X, Y, and Z. So that is something we really do look for in, a, um, in an application. And kind of definitely what I was saying earlier, you know, you, top colleges want to see that you're intellectually curious, not that simply you have a strong GPA and test scores, you know, a lot of students will have great GPAs and test scores, um, which is good. But also too, like it's being able to see that you really do again love to learn for the sake of learning. So I wanted to show also an example too of the importance of context in an application. So as you see in applicant A, that um, they wrote very like just what they felt like was enough. Like, all right, I'm just gonna write what the question answered. You know, I, I this is my name, this is my address, um, this is my academic information, my GPA, my scores. Um, I was in varsity football. Um, I wrote my piano, I wrote my short answer, answers about my piano recital and my personal statements, my, my service trip. Great, I still feel like I learned something um, and it's helpful. But when you look at applicant B, you see, okay, um, applicant B is first gen. So that kind of just something else in my mind to just know. Um, academic information, they have about the same GPA, almost the same um, scores. Um, but I also know that they only did take three AP classes at their campus because there's only, a, um, because the school only offers three AP classes. So I know that they max out on rigor. I wouldn't have known that if that student hadn't provided that information. Or um, I, they also took two additional AP tests on my own. That shows me that they have the intellectual curiosity that they're like, I'm gonna do something for me and I wanna learn. Um, act activities and work experience. They babysit siblings while mom is at work. You know, that shows leadership, you know, being family responsibilities. 
as working um, shows leadership responsibility. So I do see that they might not be able to do as many co-curriculars on campus, but they are still busy. So I do know that I can still see leadership coming from them and how I'll see that throughout the application as well. Um, their short answers, they talked about their community service, yes, but also to the tutor peers because a few students from my school go to college. That shows that they're passionate about it, and that might be because something that they also are, they had experience to being first gen, um, and it just shows me their passions of what they do on their campus and what they might want to do if they come to our campus. And then the personal statement is, you know, they have a passion for robotics, like that's great. But also they have this added layer of they started a robotics club on their campus with limited resources. So I already know from applicant B, just by writing even just like another sentence or statement, or just highlighting a topic, that there's so much more I can hold on to for that student. Because it's not that you have to tell us everything. And I feel like I'm a broken record, so I apologize for that. But really context really is key for us in the application process and really being able to understand your your contacts and your situation. Again, everyone is different. Everyone also not even has just not just navigates life differently, but the pandemic has affected people differently as well, too. So being able to have that context really does help me when I go into committee because I have a better sense of that student and their who they are as a person, because now I'm able to better envision applicant B because I know that they're a leader and that they have a passion for service. Whereas yes, it's great, you know, the person, um, an applicant A is passionate about varied activities, you know, football, re recital, service, but it doesn't get into the heart of why. Like, why are you passionate about those things? Why are you doing these activities? Um, that is something you should always be thinking about when you're submitting your application. When you submit it, you go through all your reviews before you big push the big submit button, basically. You really should ask yourself, does do all parts of my application answer everything I want the admission officer to know about me? Because again, a stranger is reading your application. So writing that information is helpful. So tips for your essays and just thinking about um, like what you should be doing or things you should be considering as you write your essays or your proofreading your essays. Um, avoid overly negative or critical language. You know, there are definitely gonna be times in your life where um, you might have had the most positive experience, maybe we'll say with a teacher, which might have affected your grade. Um, there are times where I've read and it's kind of like, well, I didn't do well in this because this class because the teacher was horrible to me and was no help to me. And you know what? I completely understand and I completely believe you, but that just doesn't show the maturity in writing that link, in writing that. A better way to write it would probably be, um, while I struggled in this course due to um, conflicting learning styles with the teacher, I was able to still perform well in the class because I did tutoring with a tutor or I sought out, I made a study groups with my friends. Like that doesn't just show me the reason why, it shows the growth. So it really always should speak to the growth and again, not using overly negative or critical language. And that kind of actually stands to my next point, move in a positive direction. You see that growth, you know, I struggled in X class, but I studied a, a, a study group. I was able to um, learn, my campus doesn't offer AP this class, but I decided to take the class on my own and do it online or do it, um, or just take the test on my own through my own research, like we saw with applicant B. So like that is something our students can write about and it does show the growth. Um, proofread, you know, this really can't be stressed enough. Uh, a great example um, that I always love talking about is like with the Y scripts essay. Let's, let's, let's talk specifically about scripts right now, actually. Um, you know, we're part of the Claremont Colleges. So it's very common, I think, for the students to make the mistake to write why another Claremont College in their scripts essays or even just across the Claremont Colleges. We're not mad you're applying to one of the other Claremont Colleges. It's more of that moment you didn't take like to proofread. Um, so writing, like double checking that is helpful. It happens way more than you believe also like in the Claremont colleges. But I do wanna let you know, we don't like share that information. It's not like I go to the campuses and I'm like, ex students applying to this school, where are they applying for you? I want this student, it's not that like, it's not a bidding war. Um, again, it's really just being able to see that you took the moment to proofread. What I'll also say too, is that if your personal statement is, absolutely polished and that's great but if your writing ability in your personal uh, your short responses 
are huge, like a huge difference or huge gap of like writing style, I'm going to be really concerned because I'm going to think, well, the probably the writing that they did over here in the short responses is more reflective of their writing. And then that makes me question academic fit. So it doesn't need to be as polished as a personal statement, but it does need to be at least be proofread. Um, and making sure that you are catching those little things and you're applying to the right school when you put YX college, but also thinking about answering the questions and just, you know, like little typos that can happen. Um, make sure your essay is about you. You know, I definitely made this mistake when I was applying to colleges. Um, a little context about myself. I identify as a woman of color and um, low income first gen. And when I apply to schools, I wrote about my dad and how he inspired me from um, immigrating to the United States and how he was just an in inspiration to me. Um, but what the problem in that essay was in those five paragraphs, I was supposed to be talking about myself. I spent three talking about my dad and two about me. My dad wasn't the one applying to colleges. It was me. That really was a missed opportunity for that admission officer because really they didn't get to learn as much about me. So really what it should be, and a good rule of thumb is for every sentence you write about someone else, there should be another sentence or two sentences about you. Your essays, what it really should be is be focusing on maybe one or two paragraphs about someone else or a trip. And then the rest should be about your growth or who you are now or how you're still growing as a person um, and how they inspire you. So I just really want to stress that part because I know that is a very common mistake students can make. Like they leave the last paragraph is what they really should have written their essays about because that's what really tells them a picture or we're able to really get a sense of who you are. Um, you know, feel comfortable sharing your background. The reader wants to get to know you. I really do, you know, after reading applications all day long when we're in reading season, it's nice to really get a sense of who a student really is because I'm really able to envision them on the campus or really feel like I get to know them. So like, um, like usually when I'll connect with students after they're admitted, I'm like, oh, hi. And they're like, what? And I'm like, oh, let's be sorry. I read your application. So it's kind of nice because you actually feel like this connection with the person, even though they don't really know it. But it's really just able to feel like this sense of like, just again, getting to know someone um, and feeling like you're able to, again, make that connection. Um, providing context while balancing be concise. That is very important. You know, I know this, especially what after what I've been saying, like, you're like, okay, I need to write this, this, and this. Yes, you do need to write important things in your application, but it doesn't mean that you need to write about everything that happened in your life. It's more of like, okay, is this something I would want the admission officer to know? Or is this information relevant for the admission officer to know? Um, and that's things that you should be considering. Also backtracking a little bit, you know, feel comfortable in sharing your background. I know how scary it is too, to also share that side about yourself, whether it's something you're sharing very personal or just very like something that you just aren't, aren't normally doing to also write an essay to a complete stranger. Um, we go in completely rooting for you the moment we read your application. So just know that we really do like getting to know about you. So please do feel comfortable. Um, and you truly don't feel comfortable sharing something, then don't share it. Like you're able to do that. You don't have to expand on everything in your life if you don't want to share it. Um, and I always like to focus on this because I feel like I was told this in high school and I wish I would have all of this advice is don't feel the need to cre create a unique intro. You know, there's this idea that you need to stand out in the college application process. You know, I have had, I've read for four years now for scripts and I can honestly say that the essays that probably have had a unique intro are the ones that I didn't learn the most about because, or I didn't really learn that much about that student because they focused so much on creating this unique intro that by the end of the essay, I felt like I learned nothing because they were so focused on just kind of capturing those hook. And I can still think of them honestly at the top of my head, but I don't really remember learning anything from them. So the best thing you can do for yourself in the college application process is to be your genuine self. You know, um, my favorite essays have been like, because one of our questions is like, if you could, you know, you made it a time travel machine, where would you go? My favorite essays have been like, I time traveled back to um, to visit my grandma like before um, she passed away because I never got to meet her. Like to me, that just shows like you're just a caring person who wants to know. But like that doesn't mean you have to go to that level. But like it's just really being genuine with your application process. It's like when you would meet someone who you would want to be your friend. Obviously, it's not the same thing, but or like trying to be someone's friend, an admission officer's friend. 
but it's like what do I really want them to know about me and it doesn't have to be this need to be like bragging about all of your ac academic accomplishments we'll see that through the achievements aspect of um, the common application or in your co-curriculars but you also are able to walk about, write about it in your essays but it's more again just painting who you are as a person and not feeling this like this need to like feel the need to stand out you stand out by being yourself that is the best thing you can do for yourself and the thing I've learned I think the most of the time I've been in admission so what I'll just say like just tips for overall admission at Scripps is that um you know use the additional information section if you want to discuss anything you haven't covered so like what I had said about with um grades or um just anything like with grades, something personal happen or anything like that, like please feel free to use that section. Write out acronyms for your clubs. Many school use the same acronyms, but have different meanings. A great example of that is GSA. If I go into a committee meeting and I'm like, yes, I wanna advocate for this student. And they're like, well, what do they do? I'm like, well, they spend all their time in GSA. Well, what is GSA? That could be Gay Straight Alliance. That could be Gender Sexuality Alliance. That could be Girl Scouts of America. So writing that information is really helpful. Context is key in every part of your uh, application. So please make sure that you include that. Take every part of your application seriously, especially your co-curricular section. You know, I think this is probably one of the most common mistakes I've seen in the applications is that they write this section like as if it was a text, like very just simple and to the point. Yes, you should talk about what you did, but it's also shouldn't be like, it should still be a formal sentence or like information. Like it shouldn't be something that like I would struggle to read or you, anyone would struggle to read. Um, don't forget to list family responsibilities. You know, that shows leadership. Be, don't be afraid to brag about yourself. Like this is the time to do it. So go ahead and do it. So make sure that you do that. I had a student a few years ago where they would talk about how, they talked about how they spent um, an hour or two hours every week baking cupcakes for all of their friends. And I was like, oh, that's nice. And that's something I considered because that's something, you know, that took up time. Maybe you've taught yourself how to learn how to play guitar or, you know, you're taking a dance class for the first time, even if it's virtually like so many students I've heard have been doing so many different things during this pandemic. So like, don't be afraid to write about that in your application. Um, when applying to schools, you know, make sure every one of the schools you apply to is happy to, you're happy to attend. I like, I was taught like you should have like your, um, your reach schools, like your comfortable schools, like kind of just broken down in that way. And yeah, like that's okay to have it in that list. But two, it really should be like, yes, if I still got into this school that I knew I could probably get into, I would be just as happy if I were to get into another school. Don't apply to schools just because you feel the need to apply to like X amount of schools. You really should be happy in your choices of the schools that you're applying to. Um, make sure that you ask your recommenders at least a month in advance. You know, they don't write the best letter if you ask them days before the deadline. So really being able to paint who you are as a classroom in the classroom is really important. So just make sure that you're giving them enough time because remember, you're not the only student who's applying to college. So if you give them only a few days, it really won't paint a picture of how great you really are in the classroom. So just, you know, be thoughtful of their time. Um, again, I feel like I've talked about this a lot already. Uh, just remember a stranger is reading your application. So context is key. Include whatever it is you need to include or you want to include. Um, show interest in your campus, you know, attend virtual events, do an interview if you haven't already, if it's, you know, something that the campus offers. Email your point of contact in the admission office, you know, it not only is nice when we're able to connect with student, but also you're able to learn about something maybe you weren't expecting to learn about. Connect to the current students on their campus, you know. It's good to see what's on the website, but it's really more of the student experience or just talking to admission officers that really I think do help our students and helping them figure out if Scripps is a good fit or if that college is a good fit. So make sure to take advantage of the resources. That's why we're here, we love helping. And then reach out, like I said, to current students on the campus. And then submit your applications day, days before the deadline because the system can crash, which can um, just be problematic. And I don't want any students to be like, oh my gosh, did the student, did you get it? Is can, can you still accept it? So just being thoughtful of deadlines when you're submitting your application. Um, and that doesn't just apply for your application, but also for like the FAFSA, the CSS, or even when you're deciding your school's May 1st, make sure that you do it maybe like a few hours or even days before because again even sometimes the system can crash so just thinking carefully about those deadlines 
So that's the end of our presentation about college application and essay tips. So I'll go ahead and um, start ask, answering some of the questions I've seen. So the first question is, um, since scripts and other schools are now test optional, are personal statements more or less or equally as important as a year before? Is there a bigger emphasis on our essays now? That's a really great question. So what I'll say about um, your the question is that I wouldn't say it's weighed more. I mean, even with scripts, when we were, um, before we were test optional, we were still uh, considered to, we still reviewed applications holistically. So what that means is that I will read that application from cover to cover and that will, part of your application will be considered more than the other. So really what I'm really just looking for is will the student be academically successful and how will they contribute to the community? So it's not necessarily going to be more or less. It's just kind of, I guess, just reiterating just how important the essays are. Um, especially too in the pandemic where so many students weren't able to take the test too, or also like with grades, sometimes schools are going pass, fail, no, or no pass. Like it's more, I guess it's important because it paints the picture, but I wouldn't say it's more so. It would just be kind of considered just as important. Um, but that is something really to think about because if you have one less part of your application, it's not like that you're going to be at a disadvantage or um, it's all very new to everyone but it is to make you think more reflectively about what do you want the admission officers to think. Um, so that's a really good question. Um, how would you consider, a, next question is, how would you consider a semester abroad in slightly lower grades because of it? As in maybe A, start high school, except for a semester with mostly Bs. That's a good question. Um, it kind of depends on the context. Like, um, I guess like that's where I think as an admission officer, like was the curriculum more different? Was it because you were learning in a different language which made the class a little bit more different? Like those are the questions that are popping through my head even right now as the question pops up. Um, so I would write about that in the digital information section. You know, I had a dip in my grades uh, in semester abroad because X, Y, and Z. Um, share as little or as much as you would like, but that's where context really is key and a really great example of that. So I wouldn't say it's going to be a negative, but to not have that information or context is like, that is something that I would like to look, like to see in the application process. Good question. Um, so another question is, I'm sharing something really personal in my essays and I can't imagine not writing about it, but there's a lot of what that I want to write. I feel like being limited with the word count kind of stops me from fully expressing myself in my essays. What is some advice you give to other students who feel this way? That's a, great question and I feel like that is something that you know you when it's it's just it's it's hard so what I have always recommended to students is before before you write your essay or if you've already written it if you could tell you like write this essay in only a paragraph what are the things you would want people to know what are the five or not say in a paragraph what are the five things that you would want the admission officer to know because unfortunately it does have to be, I'm gonna say cut, but it does need to be able to be within the word count. So it's more of what are the important, not to say the important things because all aspects of it are important, but what are the large takeaways you would want the admission officer to know? So I say five, just because I feel like that's just a good solid number I've always used, but what are the five things you would want the admission officer to know? And those are the five starting points that you have in your essay. So then that way, whether it's you listing it or those are your like foundations of your essays, those are things that you already know you considered. And then you're able to go more in detail with each of those five things that are, maybe they intertwine or they're related. That's what I would recommend. Um, I'm happy to talk about this more too. So if you wanna email me, I'd be happy to have a conversation with you about this as well. Next question, do you have any advice for transfer students applying? This is my second time around to applications and I wanna know if there's anything I should particularly emphasize as a transfer student. That's a great question. So what I'll always say about transfer students, it's more of, I think even more so with them with a the first year student, it's really just trying to see like what your story is. You know, are you taking classes right now? Are you not taking classes? What are things that you're passionate about? Maybe you work for a nonprofit, maybe you're working or maybe you're not working. You know, it's more of not necessarily I'm looking for anything additional. It's I really do want to know, I guess, your educational journey. 
what are the things I need to know? Yes, I can see that from grades, but maybe you went to three different schools because you end up realizing they weren't good fits and you're bouncing around at different schools. Like that's okay, but I want to know why. Like, was it not a good fit because maybe it was a larger campus and you want a smaller campus kind of feel? Like those are important things that I want to know and questions that I consider when I'm reviewing transfer applications. Um, next question. Does a student being first gen send out more to Scripps admission officers? So I wouldn't say it's necessarily it stands out more. I mean, personally, my own bias, I would probably say I kind of do for me. It's like, I'm just like, oh, first gen. Um, but it provides context because when I'm thinking about like of a student um, navigating the college application process, they might not have had completely the resources or the um, to like fill out everything in the college application or know exactly what to write about in their application process. So, but and it also just makes us think about, I think too, the different perspectives that a first gen student can offer on our campus. So it's not necessarily, I guess, stand out, but it's something that I like to, I do, we do acknowledge as admission officers and things that we do consider um, when we're reading applications, not a determining admission factor, but more of, again, just being able to like the context of the situation. I feel like a broken record because really context is the largest part of the aspect of your application. So that's what I would say about, you know, when we're looking at um, applications and students who, ident who are first gen. Good question. Um, is there one, is the only one additional, oh, sorry. The next question is only one additional information section or is there two? One for how COVID has affected your life and one for additional information, or is it just an additional section? Good question. So there should just be the, um, I believe the COVID-19 and how it's affected your life and the, um, the additional section. So those are the two that I know of in the application, um, but we do require two short essays at scripts, which are the why scripts, it's better word if that's the gist of it. And the second one is a list of options. Um, but yes, it should just be the, um, COVID-19 has how it's affected your life and the one additional section. Good question. Um, next question, what exactly is your definition of a first gen student? I know this is highly contested from school to school. That's a great question. So what we'll say about a first gen college student so is a student who has it doesn't have a parent or parents or parents who have graduated from a four year institution and that includes abroad as well. So for a student who doesn't have either parent or guardian who has attended a four-year institution is considered a first-gen college student at Scripps. But we also will have students who will, um, what I'll also say, because we do have our first-gen programming at Scripps, is that if a student is um, does feel their first-gen or identifies as first-gen, they still can take advantage of the first-gen resources once they get to Scripps. Um, because there are students who are first gen who are like, but my parents went abroad, like it or, um, you know, there are times too where like a pair, I, my parents started their college experience later on in their life. And now they're going to college the same time I am. So it just it can really vary. So what I would say is that again, it's a student whose parents are guardians. Um, neither have went to a first uh, four year institution. Um, but again, our students can take up other first gen resources on our campus. Good question. Um, next question, do you have any advice applying ED1 this December? Um, I think the best thing I could say about applying ED1 is make sure that your Y scripts really does answer that question. Um, you know, especially with our ED students, like we really, we, you're applying ED because we're one of your top choices. So we are like, we like to think we're one of your top choices. So your Y scripts is really helpful to us. So writing like, like, I think a well like well like thought out like YX college is really helpful for us because then I'm further able to envision you on our campus. So that's the largest thing I would say like not to say like you shouldn't focus on your other essays, but your Y scripts is I think especially important when you apply to early decision. Good question. And then the last question is do you have any advice for first gens applying this year. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I think that in any given year, it's a little hard to apply to colleges as a first gen student. Um, it comes with a lot of confusion, if I'm being honest with you. Um, and it's, it's really hard, you know, like I really struggled with it, but I think also to, to remind yourself 
one, to ask questions. And it's okay to not even know what you're going to ask. Like, you're just like, I don't even know what I want to ask. Like, I just want to talk to someone about it. Like, just know that us as admission officers are happy to any questions, answer any questions you have. Like, this is my bread and butter, being able to talk about like um, more general college application stuff. I love talking about scripts. It is my favorite. But I also just love sharing my knowledge that I've had in the four years I worked as an admission officer, also identifying as a first gen woman of color. Um, so it's kind of nice. So what I'll say is, like I said, like, don't be afraid to ask questions, but to don't be so hard on yourself. I think this applies to everyone, even persons who don't identify as first gen, like in a year where we're navigating the pandemic and so many other issues in the world, it's, it's good to know that like, if you forgot to include one thing in your application, that's okay. Write your admission officer. Like I forgot to include this. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. Like yes, you've been waiting to go to college for a very long time also as a first gen student and something that probably your families have been waiting for. And it's great and it's an honor, but also don't feel the need that you have to carry the weight of everyone. Like it's a great experience to go through first gen as confusing as it is. So don't be so hard on yourself, ask questions and know that us as admission officers aren't robots. We're really here to help you. So seek out resources and, um, yeah, don't be afraid to ask for help.